Well, in a few moments, Arthur Negus takes a look around the last manor house to be built in England. But before that, a look ahead to tonight on BBC Two. Things get underway at six with show jumping. And then at 7.20, there's rivalry in the family as Grandpa gets too involved with parenthood. There's a look at what the papers had to say this week at 7.45, followed at 8 by All Black, which looks at the role of the macho man. A tropical paradise is uncovered in Gardner's World at 8.30, and then we're in the company of Smith & Jones at 9. The first in a new series begins at 9.30. Architects of the Imagination considers the state of the door, and linked with that programme at 11.20, BBC Two presents the film Secret Beyond the Door. Fritz Lang's movie is a chilling tale of suspected murder. Sandwiched between them, the programme's Brain Drain at 10 and Newsnight at 10.30 make up Friday night on BBC Two. Well, back to this afternoon, and the series Exploring the History of Parliament continues in 15 minutes, looking at how one of the world's most extraordinary buildings was created. Before that, Arthur Negus enjoys another great building, deep in the heart of Gloucestershire. His guest today is the actor Rodney Bewes, a great enthusiast for the arts and crafts movement inspired by William Morris at the beginning of the century. All the furnish in, furniture in the house is in the style of the movement and was designed by the architect Ernest Barnsley together with his brother Sidney and Ernest Gimson. Ernest Barnsley made this rocking chair and he made it for the son of the owner of the house. And you can tell it's an arts and crafts rocking chair, because look at those handles. Yeah. You couldn't fall off this, could you? Hmm. But I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come here, Arthur. I've stood outside the gates lots of times and had a look. Have you really? Well, uh, it must be ten years, isn't it? Maybe more, since we were together on, on a programme about antiques. We did a programme about silver marks, uh, that's We right. did indeed. And now uh, we're lucky enough to be together again in a, well, a, what I think is a lovely house, with... Uh, it's true to say, not one piece of antique furniture in it. That's right. It was a house that was started in 1905. Yes. So I suppose the oldest piece of furniture in here is, what, 40, 50 years, isn't it? Yes, unless, uh, unless um, you know, they brought yeah. a bit in uh, yeah. that had been made before. But you see, now, now look at a table like this. This is a very ordinary sort of a table by Barnsley. When I say ordinary, because this programme will show you some bits that are really out of this world. An oak refectory table, that's what it's called. And, um, you know, the, these men, they, they like to show the method of construction. So here you have three solid oak planks. They didn't use much veneer, in fact, one might say they never veneered anything, always solid wood, always showed the method of construction and used it decoratively mm -hmm. so that you've got three boards here which form this seven foot long top, three oak boards, and you see how they're tongued together with what they call these butterfly bits here. But you see the grain went the other way and then in the middle of this wedge was still one more piece of oak in a different colour, the grain all going the other way just to make, not to hide these tongues, but to show them and decorate the top. And so when go, one goes all around, the whole thing, of course, is in solid oak, and you go around this table, and, uh, of course, as I say, this one is perhaps more ordinary. In fact, I think it's quite ordinary, except these people were countrymen. And uh, this chap, Barnsley, he... Well, this table's been photographed everywhere because it's got what they call a hay rake stretcher. There is the outline of the hay rake. You can see it down there. Uh, you know all about hay, don't you, Rodney? Well, I know that they were very keen on the agricultural implements that they mm. saw left lying in the fields. And so they saw these uh, great big hay rakes and they saw that this, at uh, the end of here, would be the cross piece and the yeah. teeth going down to pull the hair. But they noticed that this part of the hay rake was incredibly strong. Yeah. So they used the strength of that. They used the strength of the, of the hay rake. They used agricultural wagons to make a lot of their stringers for tables. They used this heavy chamfering, which, as you know, was to make the wagons lighter. lighter. So they used great chamfers like that and this lovely strong thing there. I should yeah. think that'll last forever, won't it? Yes. And then, of course, this one has what they call this wishbone, which perhaps is wishful thinking. Yes. But two struts go up in the... You can call it a wishbone, if you like. And there again, there was a bit of a disagreement because uh, Barnsley put them on to strengthen it even mm. and make it stronger. Jimson said it wouldn't matter to it since they were taken mm. away. Well, I know it's said that these two people quarrelled. I suppose that's probably the last time they spoke together then for well, 20 I years. I mean, there's been tables with 
hay rake stretchers with wishbones and without wishbones, yes. haven't they? Yes. And that the Jimsons and the Barnsleys designed and made, and none of them have fallen to bits as far as I know. You know, it's an extraordinary thing, isn't it? You are an actor and very well known and been in this, that and the other. And yet it's obvious to me already, you know, a terrific lot about these, this family and these men. Mm. How do you get this interest? Where, who, who born that for you? It started with me as a kind of drug. I was, um, I wanted to be an actor, so off I went to the north. I was in lots of repertory companies in the north, sweeping the stage and making oh. the tea and playing the butler and the policeman and all that kind of thing. And I came to London at about 20, and I thought, I've had enough of sweeping the stage now. I'm going to get on the television and earn some big checks now. So uh, I took a stall at Bermondsey Market in, the, um, in London and at Portobello Road on Saturdays and East End on Sundays. And I had a van, a big old van with a big old roof rack on them. You've seen them yeah, trundling I, over I, the country I'm, outside antique, I'm, outside auction houses. So I trucked around the country buying and selling. And yeah, I was a dealer for about yeah. three years and I loved it. I really enjoyed I loved yeah. meeting the public and I loved buying and selling. And I was good at buying and selling too. I did very well at it too. Yes. And then I started to do The Likely Lads on television and got rather famous and got yeah. some bigger checks. Yeah. And I found it rather hard to knock somebody down off the price of a vase or a table. Yeah. I couldn't really say, well, I'd like it yeah. for 20 quid less when the yeah. chap was asking me for my autograph as well. Yes. So it sort of came, became a hobby. And from liking sort of... 18th century things originally I've sort of got more and more modern until oh. I, now it's the arts and crafts movement from the 1890s to the um, 1920s that I'm more interested you must be in seventh heaven to be here I am it's a seventh oh. heaven house for oh. me because oh, this is a, a house built by craftsmen oh. designers and estate workers the, uh, the over in the fireplace there these um, these fire dogs here, the fire, these fire dogs were made by Jimson's blacksmith, who was a man called Alfred Bucknell. And B Bucknell, of course, had men working for him. Um, this fender was made by Baldwin, who was the local blacksmith here on this estate. 